Hi everybody, welcome to the Coleco Atom for Dummies. This is a series of videos I'm going to make where I take the time to explain various aspects of the Coleco Atom, hardware, software, peripherals, how they work, in a very toned down, as little as possible, as little techno babble as possible, so that anybody can get it. It's not an aspiration on anybody, an aspersion, I'm sorry, it's not an aspersion on anybody by saying it's the Coleco Atom for dummies. It's more of a play on the dummies manuals that exist out there. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Alright, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a mega cart. A mega cart is a cartridge for the ColecoVision and compatibles that can have up to 512k of ROM on it. I'm going to make a 128k version today. Tape here is just to cover up the designer of this because it's not to be released publicly yet. Because this is a prototype. But I'm going to build one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to add all the components to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the socket for, well I should straighten the lines, make sure the lines are going nice and tight, or nice and even, I should say, the pins. Okay, so I'm going to take the pins for this one. Oh, hold on. I can move them out for more. Let's see how that does. Is that going to line up the pin so it goes in? Okay, so there's that. Now what I do to make them stay in is I'll take and I'll just take this last pin here and I'll fold it that way. And that one, fold it that way. And it stops them going anywhere. Works really well. Now the other chips I got to put in here. I need a 04 chip. Which is, where are you? That's the 21. That's an 04. I thought I didn't have any 04 chips. Whoa. <laughs> Table's a little unstable. I thought I didn't have any 04 chips. I ordered some from eBay and when they got here I realized I ordered the wrong ones and because of the pandemic there's a chip shortage all over the place. So I ordered more, which maybe I'll get next week. Then I was looking in my box and I realized I had like 20 of them in there from a while ago. Still in tubes. So this one's going to go in here. I'm just going to line it up. Sometimes the easiest way to do is you just take your little chip, lean it on the table a little bit to flatten all the things out. And then make sure when you put it in that you line it up so that it lines up with whatever indication there are in there. So that one's in there. Again, hold that one there. Hold that one there just so they don't fall out. Now this is resistors. I'm going to do resistors last. I need an 08 chip. Where is my 08 chip? You're not the 08 chip. You're the 08 chip. And yes, I know people are going to yell at me. Millie, why are you not using your anti-static thing? And I will tell you right now because I don't like being on a leash. But you might break it. You might damage it. You know what? I'm probably not going to damage it. How do I know that the person that tubed all these things up was wearing any static thing for all I know they weren't? If it works, it works. If it don't, well, I got to start over, huh? Have you ever seen a chip destroyed by any by static? I haven't. You ever seen a cat get electrocuted by a static? Or not electrocuted, but shocked by, by static? Oh, I have <laughs> I got a long-haired cat at home. Her name is Salt. We call her Saleh, just because she's special. Her sister's name is Pepper. You can probably get an idea what they look like. But Salt's got some very long hair, and I was petting her last night. Maybe it was the night before. No, it was last night. I was petting her, and I'd start on her head, and I'd pet down to her tail, and then I'd lift my hand up and go put it back up on her head to start over again. And as soon as my... <laughs> as soon as my hand touched her ear you could hear snap 
And I'm like, <laughs> she, and she, after like two or three times, she's like ducking her head down, like, don't do that again. But I had to, because she's a cat, and cats like to be petted. Yeah, that's Sally. And then Pepper, Pepper's the one that talks to me. When I talk to Pepper, I, I look at Pepper, and I say, now, and she goes, now. I ask her, now, she goes, now. I don't know what she's expecting to get it now, but she tells me. Now I need another 08 right here. Again, I'm going to just bend these pins in some so that they're even and that they line up a little better. Sometimes i got to re uh, readjust them. Sometimes just bending them makes them go in. See, like that. All in. And once they go in, I just bend the pin on the back to make it so it don't go nowhere. See? That way it's not going to fall out. Now the next one is the 374. Are you the 374? No, you're the 08. No way. I'm done with you. You're the 374. It's hard to read these numbers through these tubes because their printing is so light as it is, and then trying to read through plastic and blurring it. And then, based, and then also the fact that I wear glasses. So sometimes you may notice that I like look over the top of my glasses because my close up vision is a little weak. Welcome to getting older. So this chip, all these chips do things. <laughs> all, all these chips do. I'll, I'll explain how the mega cartridge works if you're curious. If you're not, well you can mute. But I'll explain how the mega cartridge works. The way the mega cartridge works is, first off, well, the way the ColecoVision works is you have 32K of cartridge space from address 3, 000, uh, 32,768 all the way up to 65,355. That is your address space. And what they do with the mega cartridges, they give you 128K or more ROM. What they do is the last 16,000 by 16384, last 16K of space, you get to bank swap it. And by bank swapping, it means that it will switch in a different section of the rest of the memory into that 16K so you can access more. The bottom bank, the first 16K, doesn't change. So that's where you put in your main program that runs everything. And then your upper banks you can use for data so you can have like different levels and so forth. Or different music or whatever you want to do. But all these chips do is they, they intercept the signals because you can't write to a cartridge. It's not a writable thing. It won't. They, the lines aren't even there to write to it. All you can do is read from them. So what they do with this mega cartridge is they monitor the cart, the chips here, monitor the read lines. And if you go to read from address FFFF, which is six five five three five, it knows to toggle in a bank. If you read from FFFE, which is six five five three four, it toggles a different bank and so forth. So it's monitoring what you're reading from it. So if I read from the last byte of memory in ROM, it'll switch in a new bank into that section. Pretty clever. So that's what all these little chips do is they, they catch the different signals and invert them, correct them, and do all the other little magical things that electronics do that makes us happy and swaps the banks around. No programming. None of these chips are programmed. All these chips are off the shelf. There's no um, logic chips that have been programmed or anything like that. Now I am pretty sure that you could build a mega you could build a mega cart or one of something of that nature with a GAL or one of those other programmable logic chips and put all the logic in the chip and not have to have all these. But why? So we got all the all these in here now. What we're gonna have to do is we have to solder all them in. I won't talk through that. I'm just gonna solder. And then I'll go back and I'll do the resistors right here. And I'll do the capacitor right there. I'm just making, I'm just checking to make sure my soldering iron is warm, even though it is warm. I wanted to tin it up, he's not tinning. Yeah, come here. You need to tin. I'll put some flux on there. 
You know what? It looks like I need to clean my soldering iron up a little bit. Get out the old file. And just sand the soldering iron to remove the carbon buildup. This is not good for the soldering iron. I probably should have some steel wool or something of that nature. But this gets you started. Now on to soldering. All right, so now we got those done there. It came out pretty good. I was having issues with getting a solder to stick to the socket. I probably could have put some flux on it. I didn't have any problems with these down here. If you notice what I do is I take the soldering iron and I lean it up against the side of the post and I rub the solder onto the post. And it sucks right down in there really good. So now what I gotta do is I have to do all the resistors right here and the capacitor. I'll do the resistors first. There are seven of them. Surprisingly, I thought there'd be eight, but there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why did I count them off? You didn't have to count them, Millie. Just take them off. Now, it doesn't matter the orientation of the resistors, but I will try to make them go all the same way just to be consistent make them look good and again I'm gonna do the same thing I did before I'm taking I'm gonna bend these like that and then do one it's a little tight in here so maybe I should just go slow Alright, so my battery decided it was done at the same time I was done doing those. So we're back, and I'm going to cut off all these little tails. Probably could do do with better clippers in this but I'm gonna make do Let me stand these up so I can see what I'm doing it's hard to see these when the lights shining on because everything gets all bright and shiny and I just can't see the individual wires anymore Now I'm going to come in here and make sure everything's nice and clean and turn these back further. I also want to... Come on. Cut. Thank you. I also want to fix at least the one that's standing up right there. That's the third one down. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm up the back of it and just push it through. Like that. Yeah. And I'll do the fourth one too. Do I have to do that? No. Do I want to do it? Yeah. I want to make it look pretty. Much better. Okay. Now it's going to go back in here and I'm just going to trim up a little bit more of these excess pieces that are sticking up. I have this too. That's a cuticle cutter and it works really good.
All right, so that's done. And we have one more thing to solder on. We have to put a capacitor right there. And since this is such a low voltage capacitor, we don't need to concern ourselves as to which is the positive or the negative on it because it just goes either way. Higher voltage or is it ohms or whatever they are, microfarads, I think it's microfarads. I think higher microfarads. It doesn't matter which way is negative or which way is the is it the anode and cathode or I don't know. It's one of those things. But with these it doesn't matter. So again, what I do is I take it, I put it on there, bend them sideways so that they go, or so that it doesn't slide out. Come in here with my little soldering iron and just, little dab will do you. A little bit more dab, bigger dab. Let go, you can't have it. All right. Done. Cut off the excess. Work everything on the floor so I can sweep it up later. Let's just make sure everybody's marked reaching this the right way. This goes the wrong direction. That's all that's, that's different on it, but the rest of them all go this way. So I'm just make sure everybody's going the right way, everybody's hooked up right. We have... Let me just look at my picture. I just wanted to verify my picture one more time. I just want to verify that I do have the right things in the right spots, even though I did follow the words. Yep, I have it all correct. All right, so she's all ready now for me to burn a chip, put it in a cartridge and test her. Well, what I'm going to do also before that is, well, first off, let's turn off the soldering iron. We're done with that. No reason to have that going on. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take, where are you at? This. My old dirty toothbrush that I use for cleaning these things, and I'm just going to clean up them. Some of the mess. Get off any extra floss. Just clean it up. Make it look pretty. Make it look better than it is. There we go. This side's good. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that side. Alright. So there we go. Okay, so now I've got the laptop set up here and I've got XG Pro loaded, which is what I use to burn chips. Now this chip right here, the one that goes into Megacart, this is 128K EEPROM. It's an 39SF010A. So I have that loaded in here. Can I highlight? Let's see. Right there. I have that set up in here. Now what I do is I take and I put this in the burner, like so. Make sure the little notch goes towards the little notch. And then I have, I'm going to open this up here. It may pop up on my screen. I got a file on my thumb drive here. That's a 128K megacar image. I think it's called Prisoner of War or something like that. I'm just it's basically I'm just using it for a test run. Prisoner of War, yeah. So I'm gonna open it up. Load it in here. And as you can see, it's a prisoner of war cartridge, it says on it. Okay. Fascinating. Now I'm gonna program it and we're gonna see what happens. Once I load it in here, you just click the program. Up comes the thing wanting to know what you want to do. You just tell it the program. Let's see if this thing works without a hitch the first time. Program. Oh, so it erased it first. This is nice. This isn't like a UV EEPROM. There we go. We programmed it. That was awfully easy. Now I'm going to put it in the cartridge and see what we do. All right. So we're back again. And what I have here is a failed donor cart or donor shell. What is the donor shell? A donor shell is a used ColecoVision cartridge. Usually it's Donkey Kong, but some other game that millions were made of and nobody cares about. Why is it a failed one? Because somebody in their infant wisdom in the past decided to engrave their social security number on it. I guess they didn't understand anything about identity theft. Now, what we have here is we have our chip we just burnt, and we're going to put it into the socket. i got to straighten the legs out a little bit to make it go in. I got a zip coming, a zero insertion force sockets for this, for my testing purposes. But for right now, I'm just going to use this one here. And from what I've been told, this should fit in here with no problem, even in even in a socket. Yeah, it fits it fine. 
Let's get a couple cartridge screws. I'm going to take that off there. I'll do that now because I want to clean it. I don't want to, again, I am not just letting, I don't want anybody to be able to read what's on the bottom of it, even though I did use a Sharpie to cover it. It's not my place to be releasing something. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, hey, where are we at down here? I'm going to take some alcohol swab here. We only need one. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to clean this off really good and it's going to remove my Sharpie there. So I'm going to not show the front end anymore and just show the back end. I'm just clean it off. Just make sure there's no tape residue on there. And then put it in the cartridge shell. And see how it lines right up on these little tabs here and holds in place. And now supposedly Yes, it will close up with it in there. See? And it holds very nicely. Take the screwdriver. We'll just screwdriver it in. Then once it's assembled, we'll move the camera and we'll give her a test run on the Atom. I don't know if this thing needs a super game module, so I'm gonna have to break that out of the box and put that in there. I'll find out. I do know that so many people that wrote games for that use the super game module and all their wisdom i.e. not wisdom. They made it as a requirement that you have to have the super game module to play it. You can't use it on an Atom. So they basically, they took part of their market and just said, screw you guys, you, we don't care. Because maybe I want to play it on my Atom and I don't care about all your fancy sounds. Maybe I just want to play the game. Maybe I want to give you my 50 bucks so I can play the game and I don't care about the fancy sounds. But no, you require me to buy a super game module, which is not available. So guess what? You just cut yourself out a customer. Bad business. She'll be good business, not bad business. I saw him fight before. Bad business for you. Anyways, let's give this a shot on the atom and see what we got. Alright, so now we got the camera pointed at the atom. I got the super game module over here just in case. And here's the cartridge. Let's give her a shot. Let's put her in. Let's see if it blows up the computer. Hit the reset. And look at that. It worked. I got no sound. I wonder if this is a super game module cartridge. Let's turn it off for a second. Let's put the super game module in just on the off chance, just for gets and shiggles. I have never heard a game yet play on this. I have not. I'm blocking this. I shouldn't do that. Let's hook the Super Game module up on the side. Sit still, computer. Don't move around on me. Get in there. Connect up. There we go. Now let's turn her on. And it lights up. The atom still works. Does the Super Game module take over the audio of this? Do I have my volume turned down? Now it's up. Let's see. I was captured by the enemy. I wonder, is this a... I have no idea about this game at all. I don't know if this game is a 100% original or did somebody port this from an MSX. Game start. I got no sound. Am I hooked up? Let's try something here. I heard somewhere in the past before that if you have the Super Game module hooked up and it doesn't need it, you get no sound. So let's just see. Let's just see. Am I getting sound on my Atom? I got no sound. Am I wireless? My wire's going bad. Do I have to replace my wires? I'm hitting things. Alright, that's hooked up there. They're all good there. Now let's just try it again. Just so you know, the people that use the next office, that they lock the door. They just don't want it closed. <laughs> All right, so we'll give this a shot. Again, I don't know if it's Super Game Module or not. I would assume it probably is since they're going through all this effort, but you never know. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. 
Okay, start. Give me some sound. Okay. It's all pretty and stuff. I like how you do it. Oh, the prisoners escaped. Oh no. Is this like Castle Wolfenstein? He didn't escape. You see that stuff? He's hiding. What am I doing? Oh. Okay. But how do I get out of here? Oh, I see. All right. Well, aren't we pretties? Yeah, this isn't food to find out if... If I push the button, it just tells me who I am? Hmm. I'd like to have some sound. I want to try it one more time. I'd like to try it with the Super Game Module again. And I do know sound works, because I, I can show you really fast. Let me just verify that sound works. I'm just going to take and put some oil in. Yeah, obviously, we got sound on the Adam side. And we got sound on the, that side. Now, I'm curious. Let's just try something. I'm going to triple on my chair and it's going to hurt. So let's try something here. Let's put the Super Game module in. All right, that's in there. And let's just see. Do we still keep sound from here? I still got sound there. I still got sound there. I oh, know you're not supposed to do that. There's sound, but it's very low. That's strange. You can barely hear it. Is that an Atom thing? It might be. I remember somebody said I need to make a... I gotta fix something on the Atom for better sound. That might be what it is. But there's sound in there. Now is that... I don't know if that's Super Game Module sound or not. But, that's neither here nor there. We just made ourselves a Mega Cart. And it worked great. Very simple. And hopefully, they'll be available. Not through me. They won't be available through me. At least I have no plans on having them available through me. But hopefully they'll be available for others. I am making the next game is going to be used Mega Kart compatible. The next game that's coming out, Annalee. It's going to use a mega cart. Anyways, let me duck down in here because you haven't seen my face all day. Have a great day.